Ramakrishna and the devotees returned to the master's room. Balram, uh, Balram said, when the master placed his foot on Narayan's chest, Narayan went into bhava, but I did not have the experience. Master, shall I tell you the truth about it? It is very difficult to gather the dispersed mind when it is attracted to lust and gold. The Pandit told me he was called upon to act as arbitrator to settle people's quarrels. Besides, he has to worry about his family and children. But the mind of Narendra and other young stars are not scattered like that. They are not yet touched by lust and greed. So, Balaram is a great devotee of Ramakrishna. Huh? You know, Balaram, Balaram Bose, his house in Calcutta. They, he belongs to a landlord family, and he used to s spend his all share, his own share, to serve Ramakrishna. And he used to have deep respect for Ramakrishna, and like God, they used to serve. He's saying, Ram Balaram is saying there was a devotee whose name is Shamapada, one devotee. He said that Ramakrishna touched Naren, future Vivekanan, this, this, this Vivekanan. Where is this Vivekanan? That one, on the back. Uh, are in the front, small, but there is a big one. So Vivekananda, when Ramakrishna touched him, instantly he experienced this world, apparent world, is vanishing, and it is just non-existent. And he felt the presence of one cosmic consciousness by one touch. But what happened? When it happened to the Shamapada, Shamapada said, it didn't happen, Ramakrishna touched me also. But I didn't get that experience. So Ramakrishna is now clarifying why it did not happen, why did it happen? Ramakrishna gave the same energy, by spiritual energy, transmission. But Vivekananda's mind was ready. It was one-pointed, not scattered. Scattered into hundreds of things. Suppose your mind is scattered in so many, or you're disturbed with so many things, and some very uh, useful and meaningful advice you get from someone that time, mind will not be able to accept it. But when you are ready, concentrated, then you manifest that power much more. It happens in the class, no? when you go to have our universities or schools when you go, the same class, no? One boy or a girl who is concentrated, he gets the best benefit of the teacher's teaching, no? Teacher is teaching the same subject. And the students are just learning, but one is getting A+, plus, another is getting C, or not even that, but teachers have to give you the pass mark. Now, otherwise, <laughs> teacher, teacher will lose his or her job. <laughs> so you have to make, yes, he, he has passed successfully. <laughs> but the question is that the teaching remaining the same, why one is getting so much benefit out of it, why other not? Because the mind is distracted. So Sri Ramakrishna... the quality of the student, not the glory of the guru? No, message is the message. Coming from the Guru's, I'm not glorifying Guru. I'm saying the message remaining the same. No, suppose one good quality Nobel laureate goes to a fifth grade student and teaches a big philosophy of uh, what you call uh, what you call real theory of relativity and this and that. It will go over the head, but some of the bright boy may catch something there. It is all the capacity of the student. That is another part. What the teacher's quality is a different thing. Here, teacher is Ramakrishna. He is all he can give, transmit by look. No, he can give it. 
But the question came, Ramakrishna giving the answer. Balaram complained. Balaram says, quote, what he says? Shamapada, that man, said, when he, the master, placed his foot on Narendra's chest, uh, or touched him, Narendra went into bhava, went to deep ecstasy and divine consciousness. But I don't have that experience. Then Master said, shall I tell you the truth about it? I am explaining what Sri Ramakrishna is the teacher here. I am not talking of, I am giving the uh, example in a classroom. Say 80 students are there in a classroom. Uh, here it, it is too much, no? But nowadays uh, <laughs> after COVID, <laughs> after COVID then it is okay. But in our our India is okay. 80, uh, uh, here is how much? 20, 30? No, no. Here it is okay. If the general chemistry class then 100 like that, because all the engineering, medicine, everybody. Comes there. But anyhow, that the teacher teaching the same thing. Whatever he, has, he or she has given the lesson, 80 students all are listening to the same talk, no? Someone is texting, someone is whispering with this, <laughs> someone is doing like that, someone is observing, uh, totally focused. Who is focused, he gets the best benefit. That's the point. Sri Ramakrishna says, because their mind, uh, the dispersed mind, Shall I tell you the truth about it? It is very difficult to gather the dispersed mind when it is attached to the lust and greed. And the normal attractions of the life, when it gets too much uh, involved into it, uh, there. That's why in our, in our centers in India, uh, we train our students when they join in our hostels. So yeah, you will play when you want to play. Fully focus on your mind in the playing, no? But not when you are studying, don't think of the playing. Uh, we normally do that. So you want to have some fun? Okay, we'll have some movie. When the movie will be shown, then you enjoy that. But not now, uh, give, giving up your studies and sneak out to a movie hall and go stealthily and come back and got caught. <laughs> so that is not, because your mind is not getting the benefit of it, whatever you do, do at that time with full focus. When you're eating, enjoy the food. Many people are so much in, in thinking of some problems of something. When they're eating, they do not know what they ate. <laughs> huh? Why? I'm eating, there is no job in my life, only to eat and enjoy. Hey, that's why we have our great swamis. One swami, Nitto, eh? Suddha, no, Nitto Sarupa Nanda. His holy mother, Swami Ma, Ma Saroda's disciple. He is a perfectionist in every aspect. What he does when he eats, every bit of it, where the salt is proper, the spice is proper, which spice has been wrongly put into it, it should not have been in, that you are having a sukta, then how much size of the, 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 the vegetables, which vegetable will go with sukta, which you are given something, it does not go there. Hmm? He, he, at least, uh, I do not know whether he cooked, uh, maybe in our early days, but when he, he used to catch everyone, it's, uh, to stand there and direct every step. Uh, this, how much spice, how much chili will give, what will be proportionate, will be balanced. Uh, what do they call it, micromanagement? Uh, <laughs> no, that micromanagement is his mind is oriented. You are doing now cooking, cooking is your only job. Forget about God. This is God. Concentrate in mind. When you are doing some office work, oh my God. You go, when he's doing his office work, most perfect. In, in India, that time, we have a Institute of Culture. When you go to India, you'll find Institute of Culture. It's a huge institution. All the, the scholars from all over the world goes there. 
and they study Eastern philosophy, Western philosophy, and all these things. A huge institution. He's the founder of that. Uh, he met Yu Thant, the, uh, what do you call the Un United Nations uh, General, what is called? Secretary. Secretary General. And he gave him the idea. He's talking with him. See how perfect. You can impress such a person, uh, General Secretary of the United Nations, had to happen, and he's talking. We want one place where the whole world should unite, irrespective of the caste and of the culture and all these differences. One should know the culture of all the countries and everywhere. And this idea of where there will be a meeting place of the whole world, all the scholars and thought thinkers should meet together, understand the greatness of each culture like that. And you turned, he got so excited, we said, we'll finance it. Then why should it be? He could have said, it, would, it should be in, in Calcutta, where I am. No. He said, it can be anywhere in the world. You decide. Then he came back to him and said that, I thought over it. It is your brainchild. You have these ideas. So I wish that you should be looking after that, and you make a center in wherever you think best. Then he said, I live in Calcutta, so it will be good. And he say capital of India during those days. But afterwards, even after independence, it has its value, so let it be there. And they approved it, and they went into that, oh, what a big institution now. But he has built up that. You'll be surprised when they're looking at the construction work, <laughs> they made one mistake, many in casting, in casting somewhere, little hanging, little this. And he just watched and said, no, you have to break it because it is five, five inches <laughs> sagging this side. Uh, they said, we'll make it plaster and this. And no, no plaster, you have to break it. Everything, and if you go to the house, every corner, everything is just right angle, just perfect corner, every tidbit of the house. You will think that, what type of sadhu is he? He is after the, um, the mason and the construction engineer and others, and they're always scolding them, this is not right, you have to change it, you have to correct it, this is not up to the plan, this, this cannot be accepted, it, is, it should be 90 degrees, it is not 90 degrees. So, so much perfection. That, that is this. Uh, Swami Vivekananda's definition is that. Education is the manifestation of the perfection already in man. You understand? That, that perfection is here. We don't exercise to use that and manifest that perfection. And we think that we are spiritual. We should be spiritual. So my cloth will be dirty. Uh, my shoes will be here, there. Uh, I go and my dress will be dropped here and there because I am a devotee. No, this is callousness. Your mind is distracted. It should be concentrated, focused. Whatever you do, the best. You will excel. So that is called spirituality. It's a new definition of spirituality, which normally we don't get it. In other places we see, oh, I am chanting the name of Lord, I am so forgetful everything. Uh, everything I forget. Forgetfulness is not spirituality. Forgetfulness is uh, your dullness of the brain. <laughs> dullness. So Sri Ramakrishna said, because their mind is scattered, all knowledge can come. See, when you, want, when you meditate, what you do? Uh, in the Patanjali's way of meditation, you, the mind, you try to focus in one object, and you try to think of God, or in, in divine image, maybe Christ, Buddha, Rama, Krishna, Rama, Krishna, or even Shiva, uh, Durga, whatever, maybe different ideas. You want to focus on that point. But that time your mind will go to the office, and say, hey, I have to finish that job. And you solve 10 minutes, thinking about that job. Your mind is here, you are sitting for meditation, but unconsciously mind has taken you there somewhere else. So that's why concentrated. I am doing this, this is my concentration. Uh, Swamiji gave an example. Flashlight, uh, when out of focus, 
it's spread. So you don't see the thing properly. But you want to see the thing properly, you just make it focus first. Adjusting, and then focus what you want to see. You see this corner, or this corner, or that corner. Wherever you put concentrated mind, focused mind, it will give you the truth hidden in it. It says that, eh? Swami said that, the world is ready to give away its secrets. Only if one can know how to tap it or get it by concentration. Mind has tremendous power. That power is to be focused. And those Noren has a focused mind. That's why he got it. And this person could not get because his mind is distracted in thousands of things. That is the reason. He called... <clears throat> but... Yes, he is a great person. Sir Ramakrishna appreciates, but Samapada is a grand person. The Vaishnava from Katwa began to ask Ramakrishna some questions. He was uh, Vaishnava, uh, the Vaishnava asking the question, Sir, is a man, man born again? Master said, It is said in the Bhagavad Gita that a man is reborn with those tendencies that are in his mind at the time of his death. King Bharata thought of his deer at the time of death and was reborn as a deer. So this is the Indian philosophy. Uh, what you think when you are leaving this body, that's been dying time. That's very important. What you think you will be born to fulfill that desire. That's why some people say, I'll be a rich guy next time. This life I have suffered so much. <laughs> so I'll be a multi-millionaire. Eh? You will be a multi-millionaire, one plan. Okay, so last thought. So last thought is like, what it called? It's like throwing a stone, no? You take a stone and throw. You want to hit this corner or that corner, that corner. What is your target? A rich man, okay? You point out that and throw the stone. The stone now goes on to make it fit the target. Someone thinks that I will be very highly educated. I will be a professor. I will be a teacher. I will be in Harvard. I will be in this, okay? Say so they throw a stone towards that side. So when you throw your stone, your stone it, has, it creates this trajectory, you know? Susupti. But, uh, yeah, maybe, I do not know. But I think mind may be aware. When it leaves the body, at least, that time a transformation comes. So you should be awake. I, I, my, I, my thought goes like that. When that transform, transformation goes, if the body may be, apparently you don't know, but mind remains inside, awake. That's why even it is said, a person is dying, he's hearing it goes at the last. That's why you call, you say something in the ear, he may not respond. Like a paralytic uh, patient who is in the paralysis. He does not express, but he understands. So similarly, they are awake. I think it is they are awake. And then the next journey starts. That's why the soul have to move a transit, no? To the path of light, to the path of uh, moonlight and sunlight and this and that, daylight, like that. Path of light, 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 or path of darker journey. So anyhow, so this trajectory is fixed. And now you will have to, after getting this body, you are in the subtle body. Subtle body means like dream body. We have, in our dream, we have a body, is it not? Not this body, but another similar body. So that body, the subtle body moves and gets born again in some environment where this will, wish will be fulfilled. And then there from its journey starts. So it is the statement of the Bhagavad Gita, the last thought is very important. So, uh, 
person thinks about Shri Krishna at the moment of death, then what would happen? Eh? What, what is it? The person thinks about Shri Krishna ah, ah. at the moment of death. Ah, that, that is, he will go to the Krishna Loka, in the plane where he will see Krishna, Krishna's devotees. That is our goal. That's why we, our scriptures suggest you read, take the name of the Lord. Practice, practice, practice. Those who think of Jesus Christ, no? Thinking of Christ, 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 the Christly mind will be charged in the Christ consciousness. And when this body lives, they go into the higher level. And they live in that, uh, in that, in the association with lovers of Christ. So lovers of Krishna. Uh, that's why you call it Vaikuntha Loka. In, in Hindu thought, there is Krishna Loka or Vaikuntha Loka. Vaikuntha Loka is a plane where Krishna devotees live, or more deeper meaning, Vaikuntha means Bigata Kuntha, where all your limitations go away. Uh, kuntha means what? Kuntha. All your. Uh, 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 Yes, you, you, kunta means, ha, uh, I mean, kuntito. I mean, hesitate. All your hesitations go there, meaning, where well, you sit upon our. Sit in Chairs are there. I like it here, Ah, exactly. That we are coming to that. That's why. That's why. Why you take mantra? Why you do every morning with the japa? You are sleeping also. <laughs> why you do noon time meditation? You are trying to create a tendency of the mind. That mind will think of God. One thought. What is your God idea? Whatever you want to think, what Guru has told you. You are trying day and night to keep the mind. Holy Mother said, repeat the mantra whole day. Take the name of the Lord. Huh? Chant the name of the Lord. And His glory is unceasingly. We say every morning we chant this to remind. Hey, chant, chant, chant. But we chant it only. The mantra we chant, don't chant, but we chant that prayer only. A good prayer. But what does it mean? You chant all the time so that it becomes, goes into your system. So unconsciously, what happens when you die? What happens? Our, uh, the power of the senses lost. I have no, my voice, my vocal cord may not function, no? My eyes, I cannot see. Ears may shut down. So all these senses, nervous system, they are dysfunctional. My mind, I have no control of my mind. Now I have control. Now if my mind says, I want ice cream, well, no, finish this study. Huh? We can force on my mind to finish this study, then go for ice cream. <laughs> At least you can stop it, or you can stop, no, I won't take ice cream today. But when we die, we have no control over our mind. Mind takes its own uh, old generated impressions. So it pushes us in that direction. So that, so that, that's why it is called, when the last point comes in life, huh, some good friends should go and put in their ear the name of the Lord. That's why we go chant Bhagavad Gita, or if he's a devotee of Krishna, some Krishna chant, Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna chant, you go to Christ, Christ chant. So to help the soul, help his mind or her mind to be uh, 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 elevated and, uh, and, and give a boosting to the thought, so that last thought will be God's name. So that's why it says that uh, Bharata, there is this story is saying one king of India was, his name was Bharata. And he was a very pious man, but he loved one deer, his pet deer. So that uh, when he was dying, he loved the deer so much. 
But when he was thinking, just leaving the body, he didn't think of anybody, anything, but the deer. And thinking of deer, deer, their mind gets the color of deer. <laughs> so he was born as a deer. So don't be careful what last thought. Uh, better to keep that idea clear that I will think of God so that I don't become a deer or a cat or a dog. <laughs> we should love them, but it is not a good idea to live a like, eh? like uh, a, a, that type of life. Their human life is much improved life where we have option. We can do so many things. Eh? Yeah, but Ramakrishna, uh, true, true. That's why Ramakrishna gave the solution. <coughs> Ramakrishna gave the solution. Someone says, I love my goat. <laughs> Ramakrishna said, oh, you love your goat, good. But feed the goat and think that the Lord. Lord is there in the goat. But they say, we can say like that, oh, you like to go to Ramakrishna Loka, and say this Loka as Ramakrishna And then you are done already here. <laughs> <laughs> you are already done. <laughs> La last thought surely will come. If you can do it here now, see Ramakrishna and the Ramakrishna plane of consciousness. Huh? Yes, Premishananda Maharaj, when he was alive, that sadhu, uh, he used to live in Ramakrishna looking during daytime here. He's sleeping, but he, he was asked, What do you think, Swami, whole day? Well, I go to Dakshineshwar. I go to those Sri Ramakrishna's room and see Sri Ramakrishna sitting, talking. Uh, I live in company. Holy Mother is there in the Nahavat. Uh, uh, I just move around that area. In Jairambati I go, in Kamarpukur I go. So he lived in this Ramakrishna look of being here. So those who live, they have no problem. They are already solved the problem. Naturally their mind will be saturated in that consciousness. Hmm. Main thing, how we can train our mind to think of God so that at the point of death, the thought of God becomes spontaneous. Otherwise, you think of other thought, you will be born in that body. Because, you know, our mind is like a water. Hmm? Mind is like water. You put the water in a cup, it takes the shape of a cup. You put in a bowl, it takes the shape of a bowl. You cannot man, man, uh, chastise the water. Water's nature is that. In which cup you keep, which container you keep. In a test tube we keep, it takes the shape of the test tube. So, mind is like that. You keep the mind in Ramakrishna, in God, in Christ, in Buddha, that thought. You, your mind is holding that idea again and again become a, a, that you see the glass of water. You say glass of water. You can say cup of water. No. The water remaining same. It takes the shape. That's why you keep in ugly thought, it will be ugly. You keep in noble thought, it will be noble. You keep this thought with what is called the positive thought, it will be positive. You keep it mind in the negative. It will. So mind is not the fault of the mind, but where we keep our mind. In spiritual life, is to always trying to keep our mind in the noblest thought, in the highest thought. So that our life, we can recreate our life. We can, our destiny is, we say that, oh, my fate, my destiny. We create our destiny. If you, from today onward, you take a resolution that I will not criticize anyone, I will not look at the negative side of anyone, I will only think of the good and God. If you make a plan like that, yes, there is, I am not interested in that. <clears throat> Do you not say, somebody gives you a good food even, I am not interested in that. You are bold enough to say, I don't like it. But when it comes into the life situation of criticizing others and seeing the evil in others, we are very proud. Because you have to do that. Because it's bad. It is bad, but you are polluting your mind. When you are putting your mind in that thought, your mind is getting colored already. 
That's why it is called uh, Gyan Swami Vivekananda in one place said, uh, Gyano Karma Yoga Bhakti, by this path of Gyana, Karma, Yoga and Bhakti, who has not trained his life, is not molded in the caste of Ramakrishna. That is the caste of Ramakrishna. If you follow the four yogas in your perfect life, then 24 hours you are connected with God, then you are molding your life in the caste of Ramakrishna model. So this is important. How we want to make our life model in the Christ model. These are models. But what we do? We don't make them as model. But what we do? Which actor becomes our model? Or athlete becomes our model? No? And then there's young boys, young girls, they make them their ideal. No? And they want to be like that. So spiritual life will be to mold our life in the caste of this noble avatars or incarnations uh, or divine entities. So it said that um, Vaishnava says, I could believe in rebirth only if an eyewitness told me about it. Vaishnava is putting that question on Vaishnava devotee to master that I don't believe it. You are saying so that after death or the last thought accordingly they are reborn again. Bhagavad Gita also said but Vaishnava Bhakta, he says, I don't believe it. The master said, I don't know about that, my dear sir. I cannot cure my own illness. And you ask me to tell you what happens after death. What you are talking about only shows your petty mind. Yeah? You are thinking, your thought is more rational than that of the thought of Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, uh, Vivekananda, Buddha. Huh? Buddha said, rebirth theory. So you think that your mind is very uh, advanced mind. Try to cultivate love of God. He's advising now directly. What is the advice? Try to cultivate love of God. You are born as a human being only to attain this divine love. You have come to the orchard to eat the mangoes. What need is there of knowing how many thousands of branches and millions of leaves there are in the orchard? To bother about what happens after death. How silly. Ramakrishna, see? He says, I do not know anything. But what he says is, the, will you be spending your time whether there is life after death? What is the meaning of my dream? What did I see last night? Is it going to be true? Or you will think of God. Why bother about what is the stars are going on? What nakshatra is now affecting? What star is affecting this? And what interjection is going on? Yeah, these are happening. It will not change by your word. Your life is valuable. Can you give your mind and heart and soul in God? That is Ramakrishna. Okay, these are happening. These are true in relative life. But what can you do about that? Why you spend your valuable time in this and waste your time in this way? Rather, why not you think of God, pray to God, and be tuned to God, and your mind becomes uplifted automatically. You remain in your internal joy. So this is uh, Ramakrishna. <laughs> then... Girish goes arrived in the carriage and then he was also drunk. Now another person coming. <laughs> drunk. He was weeping as he entered into the room. He wept as he placed his head on the Ramakrishna's feet. And Ramakrishna affectionately patted him on the back. He said to the devotee, prepare a smoke for him. And Girish raised his head and said with folded hands, you alone are the perfect Brahman. If that is not so, then everything is false. It is such a pity that I could not be of any service to you. He uttered those words with a tenderness that made their several devotees weep. And then Giris continued, O oh Lord, he's talking to Ramakrishna, O oh Lord, please grant me the boon that I may serve you for a year. Who cares for salvation? One finds it everywhere. I spit on it. 
please tell me that you will accept my service for one year. That's okay. So we end here. Huh? Ramakrishna, as he, the Girish goes, is a drunk person. But look at the drunk person. His sense is that he's come to God himself, to Ramakrishna, God himself, who can transform the life, who can touch and make. Eh? It's like a philosopher's stone. Do you know philosopher's stone? Eh, if you touch philosopher's stone with a, anything may, in an in a iron, it becomes gold immediately. I touch it and it becomes gold. So these are the holy people. They touch and they make us gold. Raw iron becomes gold. So this raw life becomes spiritual and spiritually illumined life. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tat Sat Sri Ram Krishna Arpanamastu